Using a decent pair of strippers slash crimpers, uh, you'll want to strip your wire. I'm stripping them about an inch on each wire. And then once they're stripped, I'm going to twist the wire. And then once I have both of my wires twisted, I'm going to cross them right about the middle of each other. And then I'm going to twist them together, wrapping them opposite of each other. I don't want enough wire over the edge to where it goes over the sheathing of the wire. I want it to end up just at the end of the sheathing on each side, and I don't want any extra wires sticking up, so I want to make sure that they're twisted firmly together. Test it by pulling your wire. It should be nice and firm, and it should be a nice connection. Then you can just tape it with some electrical tape, and you'll want to do about three coatings of electrical tape up and down the connection. Um, if the wire was to heat up and it only had a single layer, it could possibly melt the electrical tape. Uh, but having about three or four coatings of the wire on each side would be nice. And it'll help protect it against that. And your wire should be nice and tightly wrapped like this, and you can test it. And this is one of the easiest wires to connect two wires without doing any soldering. The next thing we're going to do is do a little bit of soldering. So I'm going to make the same exact connection. I'm going to use a soldering iron and some solder. And I'm using a 150 watt soldering iron. You'll want a way to hold your wire. You can usually, if you're connecting it to something else, it'll usually be hanging there and it's just fine. Uh, but I had to prop it up to hold it in place since I'm using a demo wire here and it's really small. So I'm going to tin the tip of my soldering iron while it's hot. And it gets a little bit of solder on it. And then I'm going to touch the tip of it right to the point where I want the solder. And that solder that's on the soldering iron is going to actually start the connection. And then I'm going to just melt my solder right onto the wire. And you only want to do it for a couple seconds. You don't want to burn your wire. And there's a nice solder connection right there. Now you can just tape this connection if you like, if you don't have any heat shrink. Uh, just run your tape right around it and tape it in this method that we did the first one. This is not the preferred method. The preferred method is use some heat shrink. This is an adhesive lined piece of heat shrink. It is a marine grade. And this is the preferred method of covering your wire rather than taping it. Uh, to use the heat shrink, uh, you're going to want to put it on first. So after you stripped your wire and twisted it, you'll slide the heat shrink right over it. And if you're using the soldering gun, you're going to want to slide it as far down the wire as possible so that it does not heat up while you're, while you're hitting the wire to uh, melt the solder. And this is what your connection should look like with the heat shrink on there. You want about a quarter inch on each side of your connection so that it, it laps over the sheathing about a quarter inch on each side. Then I'll use a heat gun and just heat up the heat shrink until it melts right around the uh, connection. You'll want to do this just until the uh, heat, the adhesive lining on the inside starts to come out of the edges just a little bit. And then that'll tell you that it's melted on the inside. And that'll keep out any moisture or water. Alternatively, you can use a lighter, hold it underneath it, and then just spin your wire and the heat shrink or the flame around it. Now, the easiest way to do uh, wire connections is with a butt connector, but you'll need a good crimper to do this. You'll strip the wires just a little bit, maybe a quarter inch or whatever, just far enough to fit into the butt connector. Now, butt connectors come in different sizes. Now, also on, inside of the butt connector is a line running down one side where it's actually wrapped and connected at that point. Now, you want to pay attention to this when you go to crimp because you'll want that line in the loop part of your crimper that I'm pointing at right now. The dimple side will go on the side of the butt connector that has a solid platform. Okay, once you've got your wire in there, you want to push it in and crimp it really tightly. Use both hands if you need to. I always use both hands just to make sure I crimp it really tight. Okay, now once I've finished crimping, I'll test my connection by pulling the wire and it should stay in nice and firm. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put my other end in. I never want wire sticking out of the end of the butt connector. If there is, that means you've stripped your wire too long. You need to cut it back. All right, now I will put my crimpers back on and crimp it again, keeping in mind where my line on the inside of the butt connector is. Sometimes they're hard to see, but you'll see them. 
crimp it really tight, and then I'll test my connection and pull my wires. Now I can wrap this with electrical tape just to help prevent moisture from getting inside, and it is a good idea to do. You don't need that many wraps since it is a butt connector, and you just need to wrap it one time or so. And just make sure your electrical tape is tight. And that's about it. Thank you very much for watching my video. And if you had any questions or anything, feel free to leave them in the comments. And good luck, especially you to the winds. And hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.